Well, for more on today's announcement and what it'll mean for the U.S. military, I spoke a short while ago to retired Army Lieutenant General James Dubik, who now serves as a senior fellow at the Institute for the Study of War. Is this a sensible way forward, or as critics claim, is it actually letting America's defenses down? Well, it is a sensible way forward, and whether or not uh, we've uh, made the right decisions, we won't know until the president's budget is released. But for sure, this is a time when we have to rebalance the uh, national priorities. And national security means more than just military security. As the president and secretary said, our economy is part of our national security. So is this the new focus on the um, Pacific Basin then? I mean, the president says that China is an economic power, it's growing in influence, but does it have a military threat? Well, there is a military component to uh, the strategy in the Asia Pacific. Uh, we do want to strengthen our allies uh, in the region, Australia, Japan, North Korea. Uh, we do want to have our presence uh, felt there. Uh, we do want to counter with the cyber aspect of war. But uh, the Chinese uh, uh, threat, so to speak, uh, is less uh, military and more economic social influence. And so we want to have counter in those ways as well. Now, what about this notion that we're seeing the end of the big wars, um, wound down in Iraq, winding down in Afghanistan? Is the president right to reduce troop numbers? Well, there's two issues, winding down and ending a war, two separate issues. Uh, the war is not over in Iraq, as we've seen in a number of weeks. The war is not over in Afghanistan, and the war against al-Qaeda is not over. Uh, certainly, we're in a better position against al-Qaeda than we were. Certainly, uh, Iraq can handle many of their own problems. Certainly, there are progress in Afghanistan, but the war is not over until the enemy accepts defeat. And until we end those wars in uh, the most positive way possible, uh, that will have a negative influence on the next decade. If the violent extremists conclude that they beat us, this will not be the next 10 years of, of peace. And I guess the really crucial issue is trying to work out who the enemy is, because the president is also putting greater emphasis on technology, cyber warfare. Is he right to do that? Well, he's right to emphasize cyber warfare, there's no doubt about that. But uh, the real trick here is not to try to be right. It's to try to not be too wrong, because you can't predict the future. The Clinton administration never thought they were going to get into Haiti, Somalia, Bosnia, and Kosovo. The Bush administration came in not thinking they were going to be nation builders in Iraq, Afghanistan, and fight al-Qaeda. Reality has a way to impose itself. So uh, from my perspective, the real decision here is not to get the balance of air power, sea power, cyber power, and ground power too far out of balance. And my fear is, with respect to the ground side, that we are doing just that. Uh, the Army and the Marine Corps did not grow to the size necessary for the ten, day, 10 years of war, and now we're acting as if they did and cutting them. I don't think that's smart. General Dubik, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you.